Good morning. Good morning. Very warm welcome to uh, St. Mary's. Lovely to welcome you here. Uh, Happy New Year, if I've not seen you uh, since the start of it. It's lovely to welcome you for worship. We're going to be having uh, a service of kind of informal praise this morning, um, and we're going to be thinking around the themes of uh, the new year. Obviously, uh, it starts with the new year. It stands to reason that we would be reflecting on that uh, and thinking around what it means um, for us to, to be ready for the year ahead and how what God is doing in us and through us. Um, Let's just take a moment of stillness and quiet to prepare our hearts and minds uh, for worship this morning. And uh, whenever we gather for worship here, we want you to feel uh, welcome and comfortable to worship however you feel comfortable, Uh, to join in with the songs you know, to not worry about the ones you don't, Uh, just to use this time uh, to engage with God and allow God to engage with us. But we acknowledge as we come before our God who is holy. Our God who is the great king above all kings. That God who is calling us to be uh, more like him as we'll be reflecting on this morning. But we acknowledge that there are times that we fall short of his desires for us to be the best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. And so often when we gather for worship, we begin with confession, just that bringing before God into the light those things that we want to see his love and his grace speak into um, so that we know that we can stand before him uh, as chosen, adopted, forgiven children. Uh, So let's stand together, shall we? We're going to start with the words of confession on the screen. Um, Let's pray this uh, together, shall we? Let's stand. Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others, and the good I have left undone. O God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you, and raise me up to newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And God, thank you that that's exactly what you do. You raise us up in forgiveness to newness of life, that you forgive us your mercies in you every morning. You are the God of love and of grace and mercy and compassion. And so we thank you for the forgiveness that we receive from you this morning. And we turn that into worship of your name, worship of who you are and all that you've done for us. Uh, as we sing and praise your name this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, A friend said to me recently, gosh, hasn't the rain just been incessant over Christmas? Um, I don't know what it was like down here, but up north where I was, it was incessant, just constant. You could just hear that sound of rain, it felt like. And when she used that word, I thought, oh, you don't often hear that word, really. But I knew it was in this hymn that we're going to start with this morning. Here is love, vast as the ocean. And it says, grace and love, like mighty rivers, poured incessant from above. And uh, I just thought, you know, that constant sound of rain. If I, if I take that same kind of constancy and picture God's grace and love just constantly flowing, uh, even more than the rain, uh, what a wonderful picture that is. Um, the rain was something I was ready to hear the end of, um, but God's love and his mercy and his grace pouring incessantly into our lives. So let's use that as an invitation as we come to him in worship this morning.
Yes, God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, because you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy of all praise. This morning to praise you at the start of this new year we say we choose to praise you or whatever is going on in our lives good or bad we choose to praise you we can praise you. We thank you that you've given us voices to sing, words to sing. That we can bring our hallelujahs to you, knowing that they delight you. But knowing that also as we praise and worship and sing to you, God, it says in your word that you rejoice over us with singing as well. So we thank you for who you have made us and are making us to be. And we choose to praise. Amen. Amen. Do take a seat. We... um, We don't have uh, children's groups on this morning, but there are some activities out there. If children want to go and do activities, you're welcome to do that or stay here, however you feel most comfortable. Uh, There are speakers out there relaying the service as well, so if any parents need to or want to go out with them. Uh, If you want to become part of our children's team, then do speak to me after the service. We'd love to have you uh, on board uh, with that. Um, But children's groups will be resuming uh, next week. I think uh, Peter's going to come and lead us in our prayers of intercession, and then Caroline's going to bring us our reading for this morning. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, just as you identified yourself with us in the waters of your baptism, so we pray that you will equip your church throughout the world to minister your grace to the needy and oppressed. As your people show your love and truth, to their local communities. Please may the difficulties they face become the means by which others are brought to a living faith and salvation for all eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Orthodox brothers and sisters in Christ are celebrating your birth today. We ask you to bless them and protect them from the attacks of those who would wish to do them harm. Grant an ever-increasing unity amongst all those who love you, whatever their denomination, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to inspire a fresh generation with missionary zeal. Please bless the visits of the Church Mission Society's vocational recruitment lead to Christian unions this month. We ask your favour on Phil and Barbara Hawksley in the Ivory Coast at the moment. May they be deeply blessed by their visit and be the source of tremendous blessing to all around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the launch in Westminster of the World Watch List about the persecution of Christians worldwide on Wednesday the 17th of January will go very well and will be effective in preventing attacks on our brothers and sisters We grieve with Christians in Plateau State, Nigeria, where 113 people were killed over Christmas. Comfort them, Lord, we pray. And we ask you to cause many Muslims to be so shocked by what was done that they turn to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, we weep at the ongoing tragedies of Gaza and Israel and of Ukraine and Russia. Only you can bring peace in these otherwise impossible situations. And we ask you please, dear Lord, to remove the men of violence and to replace them with people of peace. 
in a year with an unprecedented number of countries holding elections, we pray for your divine overruling in the results. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for wisdom for our politicians in this country. May they be guided to take effective action to hold people traffickers to account, to suppress forced scamming compounds, and to make our schools safe. We lift to you those known to us who are sick or in need, those who are discouraged, those who are anxious. May we be your instruments to improve the world around us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So today's reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16, and it's on page 1161 in the Church Bibles. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for uh, your word, that your word is steadfast and true and consistent and constant in our lives. And we pray that as we reflect on this passage at the start of this year, that you would inspire us, encourage us, and move us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. New Year, new you. It's a phrase you've probably heard or seen already in various different places, articles, uh, gym memberships, uh, all kinds of places. It will say a new year, a new you. Uh, we're going to think this morning about what God might say about that, uh, how God feels about that concept, uh, and, and what kind of how we reflect on that. I just wonder, though, if you can maybe just turn to the people around you and just be honest with them. Have you made any New Year's resolutions? And it's the, uh, where are we today? The seventh. Have you kept them for seven days? Be honest. Uh, don't worry if you haven't. That's fine. Not everyone does that, but... Let's take a moment to be honest with the people around you. So, there's some nods and there's some shaking of heads going on. Uh, some people have made New Year's resolutions, some people haven't. Uh, we all have a, in our lives different things that matter to us, things we want to change, things we want to improve, things we like, things we spend our time doing, things that uh, we uh, reflect in our lives, those things that matter to us. Maybe that was reflected by what you received or didn't receive at Christmas and how disappointed you were by that, how you spent your time over this season. Uh, we all have things that really matter to us that are the center and the core of our life and obviously we hope for us that it's Jesus but we know there are times that it's not there are other things that can uh, take that place as well other things that we can put our time and efforts into and sometimes the things that we think to be the most important thing in the world someone else may consider to be absolutely ridiculous and crazy some of you may have seen on New Year's Day or the day after New Year's Day uh, there was a news article about a teenage boy in America who defeated Tetris now, Tetris is a game that to defeat, you have to get, you basically have to play for hours and hours and hours. And so he would have dedicated 
pretty much most of his Christmas and New Year's completing Tetris. And I look at that and think, what an incredible waste of time. But there were people hailing him as a hero. Like, he said, what an amazing thing he's achieved. And, and you look at his reaction to, to doing it, and clearly it had become his everything for quite some time. We all have those things that are important to us, those things that matter to us. But are they what we are? Are they about who we become and who we are in God? You may have made New Year's resolutions and you may have already failed to keep them, but that does not define who you are in Christ. You may have set off this year in the hope to walk away from some patterns that you know are not good in your life, but that does not define who you are in God. You may be caught up in addiction, but that does not define who you are in God. You may be facing this year with an illness or a health condition, but that does not define who you are in God. You may not have prayed as much as you feel you ought to or would have liked to, but that lack of prayer does not define who you are in God. It may have been months since you picked up and read your Bible outside of a Sunday, but that lack of reading does not define who you are in God. You may be caught up in, caught up in debt or financial struggle, but that does not define who you are in God. You may be having relationship breakdown or struggles with your family or your friends, but that does not define who you are in God. None of these things define who we are in God. In order to define who we are at our very core, if we are in Christ, if we are those who have chosen Christ, then we need to look at the opinion of the one who created us, the one who formed us and who fashioned us. And so according to Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, and indeed to all the saints in all the world. This is what God says about who you are today, if you are in Christ. You are the righteousness of Christ. You have been made not only righteous, but you have become a righteous person. A transaction took place through the death and resurrection of Jesus so that when you come to him through the cross and you bring to him that brokenness of your life, those things that you know are of your life that you no longer want, those sins, those things that hold us back from relationship for him, when you bring those things to him and lay them before him in confession and repentance, what he does is he removes that from you as an identity and he clothes you with righteousness you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that's who he says you are you are also a new creation you don't need a new year and a new you because if you are in Christ you are already the new you the way Paul puts it is like this. The old has gone and the new has come. Not it might come. Not one day it will come. Not it's coming. The old has gone and the new has already come. You are a new creation in Christ through acceptance of him, through life in him, through baptism. You are a new creation in Christ. The old has gone and the new has come. You are also miraculously and incredibly reconciled to God. That relationship we were created for, that relationship we were made for, is the relationship between us and God. And that relationship was broken by us choosing to walk in our own ways, choosing to live life in our own ways. But when we accept Christ, when we are in Christ, we are reconciled to God. That relationship is restored and renewed and perfected. And nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing as Paul says in Romans. And so you are the righteousness of Christ. You are a new creation. You are reconciled to God. And you are also an ambassador of Christ. As Paul says in this passage, an ambassador is someone who represents to the world. 
a cause or a person. You are a representation of Jesus and his kingdom into this world. As he radically said to the disciples gathered around at the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. You represent Christ and his kingdom. And you may wish you did it better, but you are those things. That is who he says you are. And as we've heard in the passage, none of this is because of anything you've done or not done. But as Paul puts it, all of this is from God who reconciled us to himself in Christ. He's done it. You are who you are because he is who he is and has done what he's done in Christ Jesus. He has reconciled you to God. Now, does that mean that at the start of this year, we don't need resolutions? We don't need to bother to try to change because God is doing all the work. Do we just sit idly by and become passive in our growth, in our development, in our faith? No, far from it. We still work towards being a better version of ourselves. We still seek to make those commitments to be the best versions of ourselves we can be. We still need some kind of spiritual disciplines or practices in our lives in order to practice healthy habits in replacement for bad habits. I'm sure anyone who's done any, uh, any understanding of addiction knows that you can't just stop an addiction. What you need to do is replace it with a better one. Uh, and that's what the spiritual disciplines help us to do. They help us to, to walk in those ways, whether that's prayer or worship or study or fellowship or whatever it is, those things, the solitude, silence, those things that just help us to be a better version of ourselves because it all becomes about being with God. We still need those things in our lives. We still need to be intentional about spending time with our brothers and sisters in Christ to, to choose to be in the presence of those who know him and love him. We need to accept help when it's offered and ask for it when it's not. We need to be in those positions and places where that can happen. We still are invited to join in with what God is doing in the world, to be part, to use our gifts and skills and talents that he's given us to serve others and to serve the world and his kingdom. We still seek to abide in him, and as he says in John 14, to remain in him. And that takes intentionality. That kind of thing doesn't happen by accident. We do need to, to work at doing those things. And as the passage says, we work for reconciliation with others as well, that we do work to reconcile ourselves with others through forgiveness but the key thing is that our identity is not dependent on us doing these things these are things that hopefully are a byproduct of our identity our identity is in Christ and is dependent on what God says about you the God who made you, the God who knows you, the God who created you, the God who loves you, the God who sent Jesus for you, the God who has done it all for you, what he says about you is who you are. As the song goes, I am who you say I am. Our identity is in him. Now our old selves, that old creation, will still occasionally rear its ugly head. There will be times when Jesus is not our first love. There will be times that addiction takes over and has its grip. There will be times we give in to those temptations that we'd rather not. There are times we do fall short. There are times we do mess up. There are times we do get it wrong. But none of those things detract from the truth. You are reconciled with God in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ. You are an ambassador and an heir of the kingdom. You are a new creation. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, if you've chosen life with him. And when you fail, and I say when, because let's face it, we all do. When you fail to keep your resolutions, know this. He has never failed to keep his. Never. Never. God has never failed to keep his promises. Over 300 promises in the word of God and none of them he has failed to keep. He is the promise maker and the promise keeper. So if what he says about you is this, that's who you are. Because that's who he has promised to make you. 
So take heart at the start of this new year. The old has gone and the new has come. Already come. And we're reminded in that great passage of hope in Thessalonians that he who has begun a good work in you will see it through to completion. Not might, not maybe if you're good enough, not maybe if you try hard enough. He who has begun a good work in you, so he started the work, he who has begun that work in you will see it through to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. He is at work in our lives. And although we want transformation to be instant and now, we know it's much more gradual than that. But he is at work in our lives. If we are surrendered to him, if we trust him to work in our lives, if we lay before him those things we struggle with, knowing that we need his help, if we accept the help of others and ask for it if it's not offered, if we know that we are working together with him, for him, that we are reconciled to him. We can know that our identity in Christ Jesus is secure and certain and definite and a promise. And that's why we can have joy in all circumstances. Because those truths do not change, no matter what happens in the world around us. You are a new creation. The old is gone the new has come. You are reconciled to God in Christ. You are an ambassador of the kingdom. You are his and he is yours. You don't need a new you at the start of this new year. He's already made you new. And you are enough for him. And he is enough for you. Amen. Shall we stand together and respond in musical worship to what we've just heard?
regard no one uh, from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the whole world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors and as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If you're here this morning, and you need to receive the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, you know that you have been living your life separate from God, apart from God, ignoring God, and you want to be reconciled to the God who made you this morning. But I just invite you really simply to pray this prayer. Jesus, thank you that you came into this world for me. Thank you that you died in my place so that my sins can be forgiven. Jesus, I receive that forgiveness. And through your love and in the resurrection, would you reconcile me to God? May I choose to build my life on you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, whether for the first time or as a recommitment, uh, then let someone know. We'd be delighted to celebrate with you because it's a great thing you've done uh, and to support you in your journey, uh, whatever that may look like. Um, we're going to continue and sing our final song together uh, and then I'll give our notices and blessing uh, shortly.
encourage you to take a seat just for a moment. Um, I think I've only really got uh, maybe one thing by way of notice. As, as many of you uh, know, Brian McGill passed away um, before Christmas, and there's been a really long wait for his, um, his funeral. Uh, we now have a date, a potential date, of Tuesday the 23rd of January. It's going to be here uh, at St. Mary's. Um, so if you're able to uh, join us, if you knew Brian and want to remember him before God and support the family, uh, then please do join us for that. So that's Tuesday the 23rd. Um, I think it's going to be 12 o'clock. The time is yet to be confirmed, but we'll obviously send it out in the notices um, as and when we know uh, a little bit more. Um, I think that's the only notice I've got. Please do uh, stay for tea and coffee after the service if you are able to. And what we'll do, I'll, I'll ask Becky and Steve to just um, play one more song. If you want to continue and just have this space to spend with God, to reflect, to pray, uh, to continue in worship, then feel free to do that. Or if you want to make your way through for tea and coffee, uh, then you're welcome to do that as well. But let's just pray uh, God's blessing, shall we? So the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, with those you love, with those you could love better today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.